Her Excellency Leslie Norton, Madam President of the Conference on Disarmament. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to address this forum today on the occasion of the International Youth Day. The international community bears a special responsibility in ensuring the perspectives of youth, their aspirations for their future, as well as their concerns about existential threats to current and future generations, are taken into account by facilitating the conditions that allow them to express their viewpoints and reach their full potential. Today's event is such an example, and I would like to thank the President of the Conference on Disarmament for including a dedicated youth event within Canada's plan for its presidency and member states for supporting the proposal. As in all other multilateral domains, inclusiveness is necessary to achieve the ultimate objectives of disarmament, non-proliferation and arms control, and for the effectiveness and sustainability of the agreements that we reach and the work that we do. Today's world is home to the largest generation in history. 40% of the world's population is under the age of 25. The youth, peace and security agenda has gained momentum in recent years, marking a paradigm shift in the understanding of the important role young people can and should play in peace and security. In his Agenda for Disarmament, the Secretary General acknowledges the tremendous force of young people in bringing about change in the world, the crucial role they play in successful campaigns, and the new and innovative ways in which they interact, organize, and mobilize to advance bold solutions for the future. The important and positive contributions that young people can make in advancing peace and security was reaffirmed by the UN General Assembly through its unanimous adoption of, in 2019, of Resolution 74-64 on Youth, Disarmament and Non-Proliferation. Furthermore, last year the UN Security Council adopted Resolution 2535 on youth, peace and security, the third such resolution, which encourages member states to support and integrate youth into decision-making processes. Recognizing the importance of young people to bring about change, the UN Office for Disarmament Affairs launched its youth outreach initiative, hashtag Youth for Disarmament, in 2019 to engage, educate, and empower young people with the aim of facilitating their meaningful participation in the field of disarmament and non-proliferation. We do so to enable inclusion, to build platforms, and to ensure collaboration. We do so to forge a community that will thrive with an ever-increasing youth participation. These efforts are already showing positive outcomes. I am extremely proud of a number of our recent activities, which I would like to briefly share with you. First, I would like to note that the hashtag Youth for Disarmament initiative was recognized by the Billion Acts of Peace Award as the best coalition building project of 2020. Additionally, last year, our hashtag 75 words for disarmament youth challenge, which was launched in commemoration of the 75th anniversaries of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the establishment of the United Nations, called upon youth to express what disarmament means to them and their local communities in 75 words. The challenge was open to young people between the ages of 13 and 29 around the world. A total of 198 entries were received from 62 countries. 
The winning entries were announced during an event held during disarmament week. In June of this year, jointly with the government of the Republic of Korea, we co-sponsored the Youth Forum on Disarmament and Non-Proliferation. The forum facilitated space for young people to present and discuss their perspectives for establishing a safer, more peaceful world, with particular focus on the linkages between disarmament and the SDGs, new and emerging technologies, and gender equality. The 25 young participants formulated key recommendations to advance the disarmament agenda, which was adopted as the sole youth declaration for disarmament and non-proliferation. A key program carried out by my office is the UN Youth Champions for Disarmament. This is UNODA's flagship youth training program. Some of those champions will address you during today's session. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the government of Germany for its financial support of this program. In 2019, 10 youth champions were chosen out of 6,515 applicants from 150 countries and they represent an eclectic and geographically diverse group of youth advocates. Over the past year, the UN Youth Champions have participated in interactive webinars with UNODA staff members, exchanged ideas with disarmament experts from think tanks, civil society organizations, and the diplomatic corps, and completed self-paced online courses on various issues related to disarmament and non-proliferation. Many have taken part in speaking engagements, raising awareness and imparting knowledge on issues related to disarmament, non-proliferation and arms control within their local communities and amongst fellow young leaders. It is my pleasure to introduce four of these impressive young leaders who will address you today. Ms. Dilang Eshugi Koch from Turkey, Mr. Patrick Karakesi, born in Rwanda and raised in Uganda, Ms. Kirsten Mose from Canada, and Ms. Lin Trang Phung from Vietnam. I know that their diverse perspectives will continue to enrich the discussions taking place in the disarmament field, including here today. Ladies and gentlemen, while I cannot be with you physically today, I would like to put some questions to you and to our youth champions in closing that I hope would facilitate the discussions. How can we better integrate youth perspectives and inputs into action? How can we promote and advance the participation of youth who are active at the community, national and regional levels in multilateral forums such as the Conference on Disarmament? Finally, what more can be done to meaningfully strengthen the interface between a sometimes insular and siloed disarmament community and young people? I look forward to interesting and thought-provoking exchanges. Thank you.